Let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm just there. You're there. I can hear you, but uh, you sound really far away. I sound really far away. I'm kind of far away. Like I'm not. I'm not in my mic. Like talking directly. You're just, you're just literally far away. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally from my cardio and mic. Yes. I'm, I'm literally far away. So that's so that's why it sounds like you're far away because you're far away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody's like Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. Patience. It's like a good cheese. Uh, my my voice in my presence is like a good cheese. You need to let it sit in a cave for like six to nine months, yeah. and then it's good. Yes, exactly, guys. Like this is a lot of this doing this live. This would all have been configured, you know, outside of of this. Um, so, doing this live, it is definitely different than doing something where it's already set up. And I'm gonna that because that that green little lock screen is gonna be bothering me so bad, even though it takes out half of your name. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I got it though. Look, what I got it? it. It's it's like a I don't know. You know, it's just saying you're locked. Oh, I we're think. encrypted. Oh, sweet. I didn't know Zoom. Good to know. Good to know Facebook's not going to be buying any of this. <laughs> See, I told you guys you'd like him. If you guys haven't heard of him, there's a whole command in here with all of his stuff. But I'm going to let him. Can you guys hear him okay? Can you guys hear him okay? Doing it live? Yeah, pretty much, Crimson. <laughs> pretty much. He can read the chat. Obviously, he's in the chat. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I'm in the chat. Evil Facebook, everybody says. There's the guest command. Thank you. Uh, and so, yes, you can hear him. I just need you guys to say volume is good. I'm going to, the stream delay is really difficult. So you hear me ask that question about 20 minutes later, we get a response. Right. But again, patience. Like cheese. It all, cheese is the ultimate metaphor. It is. I was actually just eating some. I have a, a little, a, a bunch of it what, right what, here. What kind of cheese were you having? I think this one is a provolone. So it's pretty mild. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a good mild provolone. Yeah, I like uh, you know, those Irish uh, cheddars better though, like Dubliner. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Those are one of my favorite. What's your book favorite? Cheese. Your what? About cheese. What's your favorite though? See, that's the thing. So people ask me, and then uh, we're gonna spend the next hour discussing cheeses, uh, because there's no such thing as a favorite cheese, right? Because mm -hmm. it depends on the situation, the context, what you're pairing it with. I have some favorites, but I can't pick one. It's like picking a favorite kid. Right, right. Everybody's saying the audio is, or the audio is good, the video is delayed. Hmm. I'm seeing uh, it a little bit too, but. So I have, I'm live streaming off of a mid 2011 MacBook Air. <laughs> so yeah. So potato. <laughs> That's yeah, what everybody I'm, would say it's, here. It's, I, I'm not saying I'm it's pretty potato. sure the insides I got it repaired and mm -hmm. a paid potato was actually an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so that might be it, guys, but it's OK. He had a ram then, someone said. <sighs> yes, that's exactly it. So I'll close like everything else. Chat is really, really funny. Um, so you you do live streaming stuff on YouTube, though, too, right? Yeah, so yeah. I have, uh, so I'm on the weekly space hangout with Fraser Kane, and I think Fraser's in your chat. He is, I and, I and I'm working around. Right, and I'm, I'm definitely required to make you stop probably about a, at least two minutes before the, yeah. the top oh, of the hour. I told you, like, I can't, right? Because I told him I'm, I'm going to do this instead of weekly space hangout, but he yes. won't let me. He bosses me around. Mm. <laughs> and I also have my own, I have a radio show called Space Radio. Uh, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, by the way. And I have a radio show called uh, Space Radio. I already said that. It's on WCBE Columbus. We record every Thursday at 4 p.m. And it airs a couple days later, but we live stream the recording sessions. And it's simulcast on YouTube and Twitch and Facebook Live. Awesome. And so also tell us, I, I've, I've already told people you're an astrophysicist, but go on about that. I want, they want to hear that from you, not just from me. Yeah, I'm an astrophysicist. There you go. <laughs> You've heard it from me. <laughs> that was that was an amazing amazing thing plug no i asked them to plug guys that is what we do i have to introduce people and also if you guys want to go and actually listen to them on other other platforms other than them just being here for the first time yes please do i appreciate and, that and hey check this out plug <laughs> 
you got to hustle. This is how the game is played. You got to talk about the stuff you're working on and the stuff you're doing. This is, this is life. Yes, absolutely. And I'm, I'm so much about it. Like, it's so funny. People are, I I think that again, this is such a new idea for Twitch, right? They don't, I mean, they have things where people talk to other people and, you know, it's, it's different than having somebody on here that's has a YouTube page and then also is going around giving, you know, talks at all these other places and, and has their own podcast, their own radio, things like that. There's that's, that's going to provide a lot of difference. So I think that's what also I'm, I'm learning. I'm scienceing Twitch chat this, this week is what I found out. Um, nice. mm-hmm. so I'm learning a lot about very common questions that are asked with space. Uh, and also what people think when I throw down like a guest command and then I ask them to talk about themselves and what they're doing. And then I'm going to have you do that again at the very end, you know? Okay. So I have no <laughs> idea what that means, but I'm all just another shameless plug. You know, that's what chat's going to be like that plug. <laughs> uh, cause I want you to actually, you know, promote what you're doing too, in case people want to, you know, if they're here on Twitch and they want to go to some of your live streaming stuff. I saw that you even have a schedule on your YouTube. So that's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, so I, I do various live stream stuff and I do various uh, uh, pre-recorded stuff that I'll put on YouTube and, and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. There we go, guys. And um, but first and foremost, so now that now that we've uh, now we know that you're an astrophysicist. It's true. What was your emphasis with astro uh, as far as your studies go? Or went? I, yeah. So I'm specifically a cosmologist. So I study the largest and biggest and earliest and hottest and most extraordinary stuff in the universe. So I go everywhere from the very largest scales, uh, the the arrangement of galaxies, the pattern of galaxies in the universe. I study the Big Bang, the earliest moments of the universe itself. I study the first stars. Uh, I, I, I go big because it's my home. That's not a great joke, but I'm gonna go with it. And what are your thoughts on QM then? Quantum mechanics? Yeah, the study of the very small. I love it. Quantum mechanics is, is fantastic. It intersects cosmology actually in some really interesting ways. When we study the Big Bang, when we study the earliest moments, the first second, the first few minutes, there's a lot of very deep quantum field theory and quantum mechanics happening in the physics of the universe uh, in those earliest, earliest moments. And then as the universe expands, as it cools, as it gets bigger, uh, quantum mechanics becomes less and less important, except when it comes to atomic and molecular interactions, which generate light, which is how we see all the stuff going on back then. Right. Yeah. Light's important. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Like Appor- just a little. Just a little. Not cosmologically, though. Not cosmologically. So light takes up the barest fraction of a percentage of the total amount of energy in the universe. So cosmologically, light hasn't been important for 13.7 billion years, 13.8 billion years. 13.82? Yeah, no, I know. It, it's That number changes all the time. It's 13.77, I think, is the current <laughs> uh, uh, Planck best estimate. Yes, I think it's all over the place. I think going with 13.7, it might be, yeah. Or I think yeah, or thirteen point eight if you want to round it, yeah. You know, plus or minus. There's there's the uh, the the usual observational uncertainty in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So let's see. So now already questions are coming in. So I see them. Uh, yeah. Do I pick or do you pick? Mm, well, if you see one that you really want to answer, that you would really want to, if if something jumps out at you. Yeah. Uh. So uh, right between astrophysics and quantum mechanics, there's a freaking old MacBook. Uh. Yes, that's true. Uh, if anyone wants to buy me a brand new MacBook, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, I'm game. I'm down for it. <laughs> See, this is, is that the- how it works? Is that that's <laughs> what I'm here for people to send me monies? Right, Bye. right. Yeah, no, it's exactly it. We give them knowledge. They send us money. So there is that no works. no lag. Or you can just mail cheese to <laughs> P.O. Box 3322 Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the zip code is 43210-3322. I'm dying. (laughs) I'll take it. I'll even eat it. I'll eat it live. Please don't poison me. Please don't poison me. Oh, God. Oh, God. I told that to my uh, radio show producer. I said, I want people to send me cheese because I think it'd be pretty funny (laughs) and I like cheese. And he said, oh, we've had people send some of the radio station personalities food that has turned out to be tainted. 
I'm because sorry. Because people are weird and we can't have nice things. <laughs> Fraser on point with dropping your Patreon. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Fraser. Always, uh, always doing that. <laughs> Fraser so is good. the man, by the way. He is. He is uh, the coolest person in the world that I know of. I don't know too many people, but, and, and you seem kind of nice, actually. I'm but decent. But Fraser's, Fraser's up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's he helped so much with this because I was getting the front page uh, with Twitch and which has been a week long thing where every now and again they shuffle me around to being the front page of Twitch TV. And uh, and I'm like, OK, well, here's my opportunity to be like, hey, space exists on on a gaming platform. And with all the respect of, of it being a, a gaming platform. Uh, but yeah, like he was like, you need help. You, you need to get other people on here, too. And also Twitch needs to see that people want to be on here, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I think you're doing a, a very wonderful thing. This is such a cool platform. It's like a huge platform that nobody knows about except all the like tens of millions of people that use it every single day. Right. And there's, there's an amazing opportunity. So I'm really passionate about science communication and bringing science to new audiences and finding ways to shape science in a way that makes sense and is enjoyable by, by different kinds of audiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And you too, though, you, cause I, oh, I actually have brought up some of your videos sometimes uh, when I'm studying a topic and uh, trying to think of ways to convey that in my own way, which usually is a little bit more crude than I'm sure a lot of people would like. But again, I, I mean, I'm talking to my demographics, so I understand. But you're really good at, at describing very complex things. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to throw one at you that you probably might not have read, but I'm guaranteeing you Let's probably did. Let's do it. Um, and, and then breaking that down, because my chat wants me to talk about this. And I'm like, guys, I haven't read the press release yet. The dark matter goes missing in oddball galaxy. That was the Hubble uh, one talking ooh, okay. about a galaxy was expected to contain 400 times more dark matter than observations show. So I don't know this particular press release. I'm actually pulling it up right now. And what I'm thinking is going on here is galaxies are kind of complicated, right? Yeah. And galaxies suffer all sorts of crazy interactions. And usually, usually the light emitting content of a galaxy, all the stars and the hot gas and everything that we see with our eyeballs, usually that amount of stuff connects very, very strongly to a certain amount of dark matter. So mm -hmm. if you see one gram of normal matter, there's going to be about five grams of dark matter hanging out there also in the galaxy. But that's a very, that's a statistical relationship, right? This is something where we average over literally millions of galaxies uh, to get this kind of number. And so it's not going to be surprising that mm -hmm. there are outliers, that there are oddballs, like the, the term used in this press release, uh, that there are extreme <laughs> conditions. There are galaxies with way more dark matter than average, and there's galaxies with way less dark matter than average. And so part of it is just statistics. If you see enough galaxies, you're gonna eventually come across a weirdo. And the interesting question to ask when you're presented with situations like this is, is this just a random fluctuation based on statistics? Like there's not a very tight relationship between normal matter and dark matter. There's always gonna be ups and downs and bumps and wiggles and you just caught a random like walking into a room and seeing a really, really tall person. Like mm -hmm. it, it's bound to happen if you walk into enough rooms. Or is there a causal connection? Is there a reason that this particular galaxy doesn't have a lot of dark matter? Did it suffer some sort of weird interaction? Was Were the, the light emitting material ripped out of the galaxy uh, and left behind a core of dark matter? Was there was something happened to it? That's a more interesting question. And with one just one observation, it's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of hard to tell. So give us, give us, uh, give us your astrophysicist definition. I of, am an astrophysicist. You are. 
of, 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 of dark matter. And by the way, speaking of, uh, I need, I need permission. I had a beer brought up to me and I'd like to have a little bit of it, but if, is that, is that okay with you? If you say no, you can drink in my virtual presence. Okay. Thank you. I was yeah, just making sure right. I, I, I usually, that, I mean, that kind of puts you on the spot asking the question. Yeah, I, regardless. I've got my water. So cheers. Okay. Cheers. Okay. So dark matter, uh, definition, let's go. It's matter. That's dark. I mean, it's, it's the name says it all. It's matter that doesn't glow. What else do you need? So it doesn't interact with radiation or does it? Right. So that was the big question like 30 years ago. Is it is dark matter the non-visible component of our universe? Is it normal matter just really, really, really dim? Like it's not actively glowing, so it's hard to see. Or is it something more fundamental? Is it made of stuff? <clears throat> excuse me. Is it made of stuff that doesn't even talk to light? It's not that it doesn't glow but like light will just pass right through it without even seeing it. Mm -hmm. And over the past few decades, we've come to realize that it's the latter. It's dark matter is some previously unknown substance, some new kind of particle new to physics that doesn't participate in the electromagnetic interaction. Photons, light and dark matter just whiz right by each other without even talking to each other. So I'm, at mass, I'm waiting for someone to ask, how do we detect it? So I'm not seeing that. So I'm going to go but ahead. No one's going to ask. No one's. So I don't have to answer. No. <laughs> What's that? I don't have to answer if no one asks. Well, I, I'm going to ask you. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, so okay. is there light mm -hmm. matter and dark matter, or just dark matter clone? Uh, you and me and every presumably everyone in the chat is made of light matter. Uh, we have a technical jargon term for it. Of course, we call it baryonic matter. I like ordinary. But actually, we're in the minority. <laughs> right. Like we're in the minority of ordinary. Dark matter. So the dark matter is the nor ordinary matter. We're the exceptional matter. Oh, which is, really? I think is much cooler. So we're not even ordinary matter? I thought we were I'm more right. ordinary matter. We're not that 5%? And he just froze. He froze. Uh, neutrino detectors. Uh, maybe when he unfreezes, he, it looks like his connection went, went south. <laughs> Fraser, note that for tonight. Um, let's see, invisible for us. We, we will, he's in chat still. Did it cut out? Yes. It did. 10-4. <laughs> Illuminati. Dark matter got to him. I thought we were ordinary matter, but this is good. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. It cut out. I like baryonic. Baryonic sounds good too. So he'll call in and don't worry guys, it's not going to freak you out. I already have the volume turned down. I shared too many secrets. <laughs> Monka S. <laughs> oh, what does the stream keep freezing? It, this doesn't. I'm not freezing. I know I'm not freezing. My bit rate looks good. We are only 5% matter, right? Right. I, I thought that ordinary matter was that 5% and that dark matter was 25% and then dark energy was 70, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna turn up the music so you don't have to hear me chew. Talk about antimatter. He might be able to do that too, but there's regular matter and then missing matter and then dark matter. Okay. Thanks, Fraser. So I'm going to stop saying we're ordinary matter, but I thought we were ordinary matter. Paul got deleted. He might be having internet issues. He's he's still in the chat though. Thank you guys, by the way, for those subs. I appreciate you. Hiptacular, thank you for the other gifted subs to clone, sniper guy, and then Paul as well. And then also, wow, 500 bits. And gifting one to Crimson. Welcome, Crimson. Air 404, Paul not found. Not yet, not yet. We'll, we'll give, him a, uh, give him some time. It's totally fine. If not, I bet he'll come back on. He's... 
It's all good. <laughs> Freezer grabbed Paul early. No, I doubt it. We'll figure it out. I mean, I think he's still in chat, so... And, and it's moving fast, so... Is it possible no dark matter is an overlap between what we know modern physics and some other form of physics? I think he was kind of getting into that, the reason why it's so mysterious. Um, I mean, dark also means, like, you know, can't see it. You can take that literally. But you can also... Um, glad Twitch put you on the front page, Skylius. I love astronomy. I'm glad. You guys can go and tell them that you love the channel. Hey, Sky Cadet. And you're the one that asked that, but I didn't get to say hi to you. Uh, did you see? He's going to be able to talk more about it and its weirdness than even I would. That's why you always hear me give you kind of like vague answers about it because it's dark matter. But also I don't want to go on and be like, I know what it is when I really, I, I don't know. And, and I even know less about dark energy, but I don't think that's uncommon. Wait, wait. There he is. He's back. Can you hear me? I'm back. I'm back. Okay. You good? I'm good. Sorry about that. I started okay. talking about dark matter, and I'm pretty sure every time I talk about dark matter live, mm -hmm. uh, my internet connection drops. Oh. Yeah, that's what people are saying here in, in, in the chat. They said that Illuminati. Mm-hmm. The disilluminati. The, the lag is gone, everybody's saying. Uh, I cut, I completely cut out. So now I'm not watching you. So I cut that out. I just have the chat and Zoom. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's what, I'm sorry. I should have said pause my stream. Because I'll, I'll tell you if there's, yeah, because you can actually, there's a pause button. I have a pause button. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. I know. I never thought I would say that, but, you know, now I can. There's a first <laughs> for everything. It's happened. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but yeah, the Disilluminati, they they try to cut me out every time I talk about dark matter. Oh man, people in about quantum entanglement. So hold on, let's let's go through the dark matter um thing. Yes. Uh yeah, so even though we can't see dark matter with our eyeballs or our telescopes, we can tell it's there because gravity affects everything. Gravity connects all sources of matter and energy regardless of whether it's dark or luminous. And so we can see on the very largest scales, it's gravitational effects. We can see galaxies are rotating way too fast. They should have uh, spun apart like an out of control merry-go-round billions of years ago. There has to be extra mass there keep gluing everything together. Same thing for galaxy clusters. They're way too hot. They should have blown themselves apart billions of years ago. There's something there that's gluing itself together gluing it together. We can see gravitational lensing, the bending of light as it passes from background galaxies through massive objects. We can use that to weigh the objects. We can see it in the large scale structure of the universe itself. If it weren't for dark matter, this is, this is crazy. If it weren't for dark matter, galaxies would have never formed by now in our universe and we shouldn't even be here. If it weren't for dark matter, if it weren't for dark matter, you need dark matter in the early universe to form the seeds of what would eventually become galaxies. Without the dark matter, there's not enough time for those seeds to develop. And then 13.8 billion years later, have these massive structures. Oh, so it's an essential thing to the recipe of the universe. Essential to you, me, and everyone else. You know, the universe doesn't care about us <laughs> in particular. Maybe I was shooting for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that all the time, but it's okay. They, they appreciate it. I think they appreciate it. Yeah, so I actually, I have a book coming out this November uh, with Prometheus. It's available for pre-order right now on Amazon. I have another book person on here? I you didn't know about that. I'm a book person. Oh. I'm still getting used to that fact. Wow. And I'm a book person. Wow. Okay. I didn't even have that joke. Can we look that up so we can add that to the command? Because that's incredible. I didn't know about that at all. So go on. Yeah. So my title for the book was You Are Not Special. Uh, the universe doesn't care about you, you know, uh, or where you fit in in our cosmic landscape or something like that. Uh, but Barnes & Noble didn't like that. <laughs> so the official title of the book that's out this November is 
your place in the Milky Way. Wow. An exciting tour of this me big, messy universe. I like your title so m And that happened with Emily's too. She had a, oh, she had really? another one. Yeah. And the publisher was like, by the way, no, but uh, you know, I hear that's really common. My agent had to call me down because I was pretty livid, but he just said authors don't control their titles or their covers. That's insane. Like, yeah, this is common. I've heard this guys. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. And I had no idea it was coming. So I thought there'd be, cause they said like, Hey, what do you think about this title? And I said, that's a horrible title. And they said, well, too bad. It's available for pre-order already. <laughs> the universe loves you. That should have been the title. <laughs> It should have been the title. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. There's the book. Thank, Thank you, you, Joe. Um, OG title better. Everybody's agreeing with that. If you self-publish, you can. Yeah, but publishers are, they're useful. There's a reason. There's a reason. Because I could just self-publish this, but there's a reason I pushed to have it published through a traditional publisher. One was I wanted a real editor to go through my incoherent ramblings and make something sensible out of it. <laughs> and they have massive platforms. Mm-hmm. There you go. And Barnes and Noble's pretty massive. Yeah, even though they suck at picking titles, but Yeah. Yeah. Is there an audiobook someone said? Uh no, not yet, but if it sells well, uh I hope there will be and you bet I want to read the thing. And someone just said, uh did he say Prometheus? Yes, it's through Prometheus Publishers. There you go. Sorry, I'm eating dinner too because this is a 6-hour That's fine. It's not rude at all. I'm not hungry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty comfortable with you, apparently. I'm good. <laughs> mm, delicious water. <laughs> Sorry. I can pick up on personalities usually. So satisfying. <laughs> and so it's good. Um, the so what's for dinner? You So you eat mm -hmm. while live streaming. Mm -hmm. Is this common? Um, well, chat really doesn't like it if I take a break. So, um, oh, that's rude. I, I, yeah, the, well, even if I go to the restroom or something, I'm like, hey, guys, I've been streaming. Let me just... Because it, gamers don't really get up when they're streaming, too. So I, I, it's kind of just like the... Expected. Are there diapers involved? Because that's my immediate next question. Well, I feel like the male anatomy accounts for that being, you know, easier to do. Um, for me, um, yeah, see, no break. Like, see this? Hold. Wow. No. See, she uses a cup. Lies. But, you know, <laughs> um, she could read the book on stream. He could read the book on stream. He could do his own book reading because I would Can like I? to. I actually, yeah. they would probably sue me. I feel like that's illegal. Really? Or, or some breach of, of, cause I, well, I don't really know. Oh no, that's a good question. Yeah, because yeah, then that could be a loss of money for them. That's okay. Yeah, nope, sorry. Didn't think that went through. No break, gotta pump those I'll numbers up. I'll still do it. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, no, Actually, it's- I do care. I don't want to <laughs> cancel the contract. <laughs> please Prometheus, if you're watching, uh, please send that royalty check. Yeah, we're, we're just three, joking. 3322 Columbus, Ohio, 43210. <laughs> They own the book, not him. <laughs> no, they own me. You should see my contract. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They own me, my firstborn child, and I think my house. Everything, even the unborn children that mm -hmm, might never mm -hmm. even happen, still owned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for 10 years. There is a there is a 10-year time limit on that. Oh, okay. So, okay. Well, that, that's, a, that's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah, well, you know, I, I know. have to be busy. I'm busy writing books. Yeah. I have book children. Yeah, so let's see someone. Um, I heard about filaments and that link galaxy clusters together. Mm -hmm. What are they? Uh, th so there's two kinds of filaments that you'll hear about, actually three in astrophysics. At the very biggest scales, uh, what's crazy is when you, when you zoom out, uh, go bigger than our solar system, even bigger than our galaxy, and zoom out so far that entire galaxies are just tiny points of light, the placement of galaxies in our universe isn't random. It doesn't look like you just tossed salt onto a table. There's a structure to it. Uh, galaxies are arranged in dense clumps and there's long thin ropes made of galaxies and there's broad walls and there's incredible volumes, uh, nearly empty volumes between them called the voids. And it kind of sort of looks like a uh, spider web. So we call it the cosmic web and it is made of galaxies. It is the largest pattern found in nature. It's made of galaxies. So comparing the scale of the cosmic web to galaxies is the same as comparing the scale of your body to cells 
if your cells were a hundred times smaller. So this is an incredibly vast, incredibly intricate structure. It literally fills up the universe edge to edge, and it is the largest thing that you can see in the universe. I might be showing a picture of it. Maybe. Maybe. Or a spider web. It looks like one. But are those voids really, really, really void? Or can you find a galaxy or hundreds of thousands in those voids? Yeah, what's really crazy is in these voids, uh, there are some dim, what we call dwarf galaxies. They're, they're much smaller than typical galaxies. Uh, it is largely empty. We call them under dense regions. They have less than the average density. And there are pockets within those voids that are completely 100% empty, even no dark matter found in the, in the deepest part of the voids. But there are sprinkles here and there of galaxies. Okay, so a void is not always truly a void. Right, a chunk of it will be truly void, uh, but then there is a, a shadow structure within the voids. Awesome. Uh, someone's like, atoms are actually energy. Yeah, mass is energy. <clears throat> take out the take out the C, you know, equals MC squared. Just take out the C squared. Mm -hmm. That's just a conversion factor. It's just a number. E equals M. Energy is mass. Mass is energy. They are exactly you can the same. Switch thing. those around. <laughs> is there a relation between dark matter and black holes? Not particularly, even though they're both kind of dark. Uh, just a coincidence. It turns out there's lots of stuff in the universe that doesn't glow. Uh, we think that perhaps the very first black holes to appear in the universe when the universe was just uh, 100 million years old or so may have been formed from very dense concentrations of dark matter, but that's just one particular idea. We're not sure about that, but that's the only connection. And then someone says antimatter versus matter. Let's go. They didn't say that, but I, I said, I kind of, I like the let's go. Okay. I like the editorial edition. Thank you. Uh, it makes it seem exciting. Yeah. Let's go. Like, wow. Yeah. Uh, so matter one, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know why so I love it. You, you guys are asking all these questions where like, there is no known answer. I know to, this is what I, modern science. <laughs> I mean, I can make stuff up all day long, <laughs> but it's no, we don't know. Uh, all of our fundamental physics or, or almost all of our fundamental physics produce matter and antimatter in equal quantities. So why isn't the universe 50-50 matter and antimatter? Why did matter win out? There are some processes in the standard model of physics that give a slight asymmetry, a slight preference for matter over antimatter, but those processes are too weak to to account for the observed abundance of matter in the universe. So something funny was going on in the very earliest universe, but we don't know what. Someone just said, is that a blackboard behind you? I believe it is. Yeah, it's totally, uh, this is actually a wall and I painted it with uh, chalkboard paint. So illusions, illusions, ill. There's an I in there. I said- a Okay, not, not literally, literally, literary <laughs> illusions. <laughs> Like I'm gonna work, bring up War of the Worlds or Charles Dickens or something. <laughs> right. Thoughts on parallel universes. See, this is. You, can I answer that one for you? Yeah, go for it. We don't know. I'll take a break. Do we know? No, we don't. Okay. No. I. <sighs> Parallel universes is a kind of a hard concept because it appears in a few in two different areas. It appears in quantum mechanics in this uh, what we call the many worlds interpretation of at the fundamental subatomic level. There's all these random processes, and you're like, how do you go from uh, you know an equation that describes the process to something that actually happens? It looks like a roll of the dice. And there's one line of thinking that says every possible realization at the quantum level is happening all the time. Each one is generating, if that's even the right word, its own universe that's completely not parallel. It's actually perpendicular to our universe. Uh, that's always had a lot of baggage attached to it. And no one's, not most people haven't been a big fan of it just because it seems like a little bit excessive. Like in my lawnmower, 
I, by the time I've finished cutting the grass, I've generated <clears throat> tens of quadrillions of universes. Seems a little <laughs> weird, uh, but whatever, you know, universe, the nature is under no obligation to not be weird. And it also appears, uh, parallel universes also appear when we study the Big Bang, the very early universe, and we study inflation, this hypothesized event that has a pretty decent amount of evidence behind it, that the universe underwent a incredibly rapid phase of expansion when it was less than a second old. It expanded from being about the size of an atomic nucleus to about the size of an apple, in, I forget the numbers, it's like 10 to the minus 40 seconds mm -hmm. or something ridiculous like that. And in our very most basic formulations of the mathematics that would actually operate here, we hypothesize that uh, we have our observable universe, our little bubble that we can see, and then there's so much more universe outside of what we can see. So the actual physical universe is larger than what we're able to see right now. And the question is, well, how much is there? Yeah, that's a really good question. And someone just said, is that similar to string theory? Actually, inflation's one that kind of, uh, I'll let you answer that. What, what, how is that, is, is inflation similar to string theory? <clears throat> so inflation actually uh, was developed in parallel around the same time. It was developed in the eighties. Uh, and it exists independently of string theory. Well, the, at least the basic concept. But then you start asking questions like, okay, let's say the universe underwent something like inflation. Well, what caused it? What generated it? How did, how did what happened before the inflationary epoch? And that's when you start introducing uh, quantum gravity. That's when you start introducing unified field theories. That's where string theory starts to play a role of saying, oh, before inflation, something like string theory was maybe operating. And then as the universe expanded and cooled, it broke apart into what we call the standard model and the familiar forces of nature. And then that triggered inflation. So string theory is operating, cosmologically speaking, operating at smaller and hotter scales than the inflationary epoch. And, and what are your thoughts on string theory? I've never been a huge fan of string theory because it's always sounded nice. And it's always sounded more elegant than the mathematics actually are. And we've been, we, not me personally, but you know, we, the world has mm -hmm. been working on string theory for like 40 years and has made almost no progress and so that itself is kind of troubling mm -hmm. for like a theory like you'd hope someone will be able to crack something you know in 40 years and what's been especially worrying the past few years is the large mm -hmm. hadron collider mm -hmm. has been operating and it's been operating it found the higgs boson yay Nobel prize whatever let's move on it's been searching for something beyond the standard model. Like mm -hmm. how can we go past our current level of understanding of physics, of particle physics? Mm -hmm. And the first step that theorists were able to come with, the first extensions beyond the standard model is something we call supersymmetry. And the Large Hadron Collider in, was designed to not only find the Higgs boson, but also to begin to test supersymmetry to look for some exotic new particles, to look for some rare interactions that might hint that supersymmetric theories, these extensions to the standard model are correct. It hasn't found any. Hmm. And supersymmetry is on really, really thin ice nowadays, which is okay. Like that's, you know, that's the life of physics. Without supersymmetry, you can't go any further in the direction of string theory. If supersymmetry is found to be wrong, then string theory is also wrong. If super supersymmetry is found to be right, then there's still a chance that string theory is right or wrong or it's something else. But with no supersymmetry, it's like knocking all the legs off the table, bottom of the table. There's nothing left to hold it up. So 
How do we move forward? I don't know. I just love it. Um, Hex in my chat just said, I'm so taking notes on string theory. I'm getting schooled right now. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Don't you love it? I love it. I absolutely love it because there's parts of this where I'm like, oh, it's true. Oh, okay. Where I've seen a lot of these things, but I never really have the time to process it like this. So this is vibration oh, theory. Yeah, man. If you want it, if you always want to know <clears throat> what direction the, a field is moving in, just look up conference titles. Oh, yeah. And the, and the titles of the conferences will tell you what people are thinking. And the titles of conferences over the past few years in particle physics have been things like moving past supersymmetry. What do we do now? Yeah. And, and, right. and that's telling you, that's telling you right. something. Yeah. Don't go to YouTube <laughs> unless you're watching Paul. <laughs> yeah. Or, or Fraser. Fraser. Yeah, there, there's some good ones. Uh, PBS FaceTime is, is really solid. Yes, yes. PBS FaceTime is really good. Although people, I think that has somebody on there that, that doesn't blink and my chat freaks out when we watch it because they're like, he's not blinking. And I'm like, guys. Oh, the, oh, the host doesn't blink? Yeah, there's a host on there. I think it's. I could try that. Yeah, I know, but he doesn't. I, I watched with my chat and I was like, you guys, this is true. Confirmed. Everybody's like, he's not blinking. Um, <laughs> I wonder if that's intentional. Because I notice uh, when I start to think a lot, I blink really, really rapidly. And mm -hmm. I would start to notice it. It's something like no one pays attention to except yourself when you're watching yourself on video. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm like a butterfly. I'm, I'm blinking back there. And <laughs> it, so I try to intentionally, and I, and I always forget, but I try to intentionally slow down my blinking because it'll just be like this. <laughs> and so I wonder if he's, yeah, I wonder if he saw some early test footage and he's like, man, I could, you know, I could, I I'm could an over blinker. I'm an over blinker. <laughs> and now he's overcompensating by under blinking and he's just going to be like a super focused. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to talk about science. I'm going to look like a robot. Do 10 second takes. And then when they say cut, he's like, oh, to get the eye drops out. <laughs> gets the and eye drops. They, and they say action. And he's like, I'm going to talk about science. And then and you start to see the blood vessels appearing. And uh, that's when they say cut. And then he gets back now. <laughs> it's probably a lot of cuts. I'm actually like crying because I'm laughing so hard. Um, yes. Matt O'Dowd, by the way, is the name of the host. He's a super cool guy. He's So he is cool, guys. I and mean, he probably does blink in person. Maybe. <laughs> mm, now that you Now that you say it. Oh, I'm oh thinking. Man. I'm thinking. I know. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. It's like everybody is like your eyes are sweating. <laughs> your eyes I are know. sweating. Those are called tears. They're but I don't I don't. Oh, is that the joke? Yes. Is that the joke? Your eyes it's don't. not yes. Yeah, so Sorry, right. internet. Sorry, chat. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're actually really good. So wait, so um wait, there's some there's so many good questions. You guys are doing this is amazing. Um, so someone said, I was reading something about an experiment, and there's another one below that, so I'm going to get to that one too, but uh, I was reading something about an experiment trying to turn energy into matter. Is that possible? Yeah, so I saw, the, this, was, this was just from the past week or so, and this was really perplexing because it was like, NASA scientists are trying the impossible of turning energy into matter. Dun, dun, energy dun. can turn into matter <laughs> all the time because energy is matter and matter is energy. All you need to do is concentrate enough energy in one spot and you have matter. So you can take a high energy light photons, gamma rays above a certain energy threshold. Um, I forget the number. I think it's 1300 uh, million electron volts as if that has any meaning to anyone. Totally got it. High energy photon gamma ray, it can spontaneously split off and become uh, an electron and a positron, just out of nowhere. That yeah, you can turn you can turn energy into mass, mass and energy. It doesn't matter. There you go. And what's the current thoughts on the universe expanding forever, big freeze, or big crunch? According to as best as we can tell, given our current measurements, which will probably change Thursday, is that the universe will continue expanding forever, and all energy differences will eventually freeze out and nothing will happen. And that will be the end state. will be absolutely absolute nothingness, evenness. Uh, it's really boring and sad and depressing. 
Yeah, and and and, and the universe is just going to continually keep getting darker and darker, guys. Just add that to the more boring stuff. Yep, yep. Stars will. Uh, in fact, star formation has already started to wind down. So we. Peak star formation was about 9 billion years ago, I think. And the universe is not producing as many new stars today as it was a billion years ago, 5 billion years years ago, and 9 billion years ago. <clears throat> and eventually it'll just shut down. And there'll be no more luminous sources of matter. And it will be really lame. Uh, the only saving grace the one little gotcha that might be in here is we don't understand dark energy at all. Mm -hmm. All we know is that the expansion rate of the universe is accelerating. It's getting faster and faster every single day. We have no idea why. Whatever's causing it might change character. It might decay. It might flip around. It might change slowly. It might change suddenly. We have no idea what dark energy will do. So until we pin down the nature of dark energy, we can't say for sure what the ultimate fate of the universe will be. Someone just said, I have to, I have to ask this because I mean, it's just, it, wait, where'd it go? It's gone. And it's gone. And it's um, gone. And it's gone. It was, someone was like, can you marry me? For you. Paul, can we date? Can we date? I'm married. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, ouchers. We give a mini kappa too, which means I'm just kind of joking, but mini just kind of joking. <laughs> so just a little bit joking. Just a little bit. Oh, is it that like when you say something, you know, it's a little bit risky. And if you get rejected, you're like, oh, I was just kidding. But really, you weren't kidding. That was just your way to save face. <laughs> right. That's. Or am I thinking about it too much? Well, no, no, because actually people do that all the time. So they'll ask a serious question. And they'll just put a kappa. So, you know, in one streamer's chat, they actually have like a no kappa emote. Um, no Alan, kappa. you could throw that. Yeah, because it's it's like, you know, that's how people do things passively on here is they'll be like, uh, are you married, Kappa? And they totally mean, you know, they want to ask the question, I mean, but they, they don't. Want, they right. They they don't want you to know, you know. They don't want you to know. That seems mildly abusive and passive aggressive. It's so passive. Rarely is it, ca uh, rarely, wait, hold on. Rarely is it passive aggressive and, and that someone would say something. I've had people say like, you're such a bad word, whatever, which I'm not using. I can, I can say, do you mind? Okay. You can, you can curse in my presence. Okay, okay. I'll I can have ears. beer guys and I can curse. So, you know, I, I can have somebody be like, you're such a bitch and they'll be like, Kappa. Now there By are the instances- way, I'm the chief scientist of a children's <laughs> science museum. You're. <laughs> <laughs> not awkward <laughs> yeah so it's 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 one of those things where you know like sometimes people mean that sometimes actually do say that jokingly in my chat but i usually know who they are so they've established themselves first but yeah the cap and no cap a thing it's it happens mm -hmm. all the time it's great it's amazing it's crazy it's like when uh you do these weird you hear about these weird experiments or freaks of nature where there's like a community of orphans that are never spoken to their entire lives and they develop their own vocabulary and language and ways of communicating mm -hmm. it's like that yeah so someone's like was that passive aggressive i didn't know i didn't see what there's Let's a difference just go ahead and say yes yes there's a difference between passive aggressive and just being passive there's the aggressive or just being aggressive or just being aggressive there you go there's three things um so let's say anybody have uh oh wait how do you guys uh how uh, do you guys find out about people's lives with stars what and mm. Mm. and rock planets we take pictures of stuff in space <laughs> Pictures. Pictures, pretty pictures. And that's how we learn. <laughs> and we do science. I, I'm not sure I even had, uh, you know, the, um, I use it for sarcasm, right. But unfortunately there's people out there that don't, I mean, but yeah, I, I don't take, okay, wow. We'll talk about that later guys. Cause we only got another. That seems pretty in depth. It is. That but... seems like it's own. You need to bring in another expert for I... that. A twitchologist. Yeah, like somebody else that experiences and wants to debate the no kappa versus the real kappa. Which I bet in a hundred years there's gonna be a whole department of twitchology. At yeah. Major universities, it'll be a thing. We just have to educate them, so we need some some place to put educational content. However, I, I okay, so wait, I have a question for you. Okay. How do you feel about the word education? Neutral? 
Yeah, so so if you were on this platform as a gamer and they opened up like an educational section to have all this stuff. I see. Mm -hmm. To me, the word education has uh, con connotations of formal settings like classrooms, uh, whether it's high school or pre-K or university level. Education happens in so many different ways. In the biz, it's called informal education. So if you go to a science center, you're being informally educated. If you're watching a YouTube video you're, or a Twitch streamer, you're being informally educated. I don't call myself an educator. I call myself a science communicator. I'm more interested in telling stories, talking about what I know and what I love about the universe, finding different ways to share it. So I don't self-identify as a communicator, but you're perfectly welcome to self-identify as one. And I don't know if some calling something an educational thing is necessarily going to be a benefit because there are certain societal expectations attached to that word. Right. And actually, Justin uh, in the chat just said, sounds like a liability. A little bit, yeah. So here I am talking about astronomy, but I graduated computer science. Already, just that's... like Fraser King. I know. I know. And I started out in computer science. See? I I did two years in computer science before I switched to physics. Yeah, and and sometimes that's reverse. Sometimes people start off with mm -hmm. physics, go to or some kind of engineering, and then they're yeah. We you know. call them losers. <laughs> it's just a nickname. I uh, need Kappa. you to be a regular can on I here. Say, I do. do. I say Kappa? If... <laughs> yes, you can say Kappa. People okay, say Kappa. people say emotes all the time, and and it doesn't even make sense. Sometimes I do that around here with my boyfriend. We'll just make jokes all the time back and forth at each other. And I'll be like, well, I'm going outside in the rain, Dan's game. Um, and that means something. Yeah, it means like, ah, oh, I don't want to. Angry face, uh, you know? Angry face. Yeah. Instead of just making an angry face, which yeah. would express the emotion, <laughs> you say it. Well, do you keep a neutral face while saying it? And no, I never can because I'm, I'm, I'm being so edgy in that I'm making fun of the people that actually do that. I'm super edgy because I'm making fun of people that do that. Because people do do that. I hey, bet people... I gotta give a shout out. So uh, <laughs> Nancy Graziano, she's the producer for Weekly Space Hangout, which mm -hmm. I'm going to jump on in a few minutes. Yep. Uh, she suggested you should be a guest. And I absolutely agree. You'd be really fun to have on that show. Is my personality okay? It's not that offensive. It's Fraser show. So, you know... We're talking bottom of the barrel, gutter, anything goes. Oh, man, I'm ready. So mm -hmm. someone just Basically, said, we'll take anyone. <laughs> we'll we'll take anyone. Well, maybe I can get some other big uh, Twitch streamers to to actually get. I, I, I think this. So I've been doing this for like a year, over a year. Wow. Yeah. And I even got a, a panel at TwitchCon. It was super wonderful because it was right nice. at the end of, of, the, of the con. Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. That part always makes me laugh. Like it's so yeah, no, it's it's bring beers. Absolutely. That's that should be that that's a, that should be a requirement when you're talking about mm. space stuff. I really I and that's what scares me about bringing it full circle with the education talk, because I don't want people to walk into my channel and be like, oh, you know, this stuff's all above my head or whatever. I want people to hang out. And I tell them all the time that half of the things I'm talking about are you know, galactic bulges, okay? Or, or you know, high mass mm. stars that are blue balls, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, galactic There's merging. There's so much innuendo. Yeah. Because, you know, we're talking about grad students who are writing these papers. They're lonely. They've, <laughs> they've been working on their dissertations for three years in the dark corner of a lab, starved for human contact. Mm -hmm. They're going to come up with some weird stuff. Yeah. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. we have some really amazing names in space and I don't even need to meme them. It's just great. It's just wonderful. It's already there. Um, yeah, but so I, juicy. yes, I don't, I know, I don't want you to, so I said I would cut you off about, you know, do, do you want to have a chance to like actually get up and get and do something before you go on the weekly space hangout? No, I, the reason I asked about diapers is that I am wearing one. I just want to see if it was like cool or normal or something. Kappa? No cap. Oh, oh, I love it. I wonder how many people are just going to be dying from this. Okay, there, there goes everybody. 
Oh, man. I think he needs to be a regular on this stream. Sorry, Sky Skyly's the gateway educator. Yeah, but I, do, like, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I don't want an education section. I think that would scare away people. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm about communication. I'm about sharing. Yeah, me too. Uh, Yo, know, this is a wonderful universe that we all live in, and I want to find cool ways to talk about it. Yes. Everybody. So, so Mo, more power to you. I'd love to have you as a guest on my radio show on Space Radio. Sometime. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> can you talk about your radio station again, please? Yeah. So it's Space Radio. You can go to spaceradioshow.com for all the links. Uh, it does live stream here on Twitch every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I take questions. So the, so the show is, is a, a madhouse in a hot mess and I love it. I talk about the news for like five minutes. And then I have a call-in phone line where I take live questions <gasps> and live stream questions and I answer them spontaneously on the show, just like we just did for the past hour, except it goes on the air on a major market radio station. Yeah, I hold up, hold why up. why they let me do that, but yeah. it's really fun. Okay, one second. Twitch? You said Twitch. Yeah, so so uh, this live my space radio live streams on YouTube and on Twitch. So uh, twitch.tv slash Paul Matt Sutter is my channel where you can find all the space radios. I thought you just like created that for this today. No, it's been around for, for months. Oh man. I'm an old timer. Man. I but, I, but I'm actually absolutely fascinated. I've actually been watching you, not in a creepy way, but watching you and like Pamela Gay and seeing how you guys approach science communication on Twitch because I'm going to totally copy it. Someday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm copying you all too. So I guess we're all copying each other. We're it's all great. Copiers. In fact, we're all just making it up. There is no <laughs> new science. There hasn't been since 1954 was actually the last published paper in all of science. And we're just like bouncing around and copying ideas off each other. Ever since Mr. Wizard, it's been, it's been copy, copy, copy. No new news, guys. It's it's all fake. You say, oh, it's all fake. No, it's always been fake news. I know. I have that I have that emote. That I have fake, fake news, news emotes. Look at this. Like, can we flood wow. the chat with fake news emotes? <laughs> Exposed, man. Exposed. Yeah. No new science. Well, you got a minute. You got a minute now. You got a minute and fifteen. I'm gonna keep talking. But anyways, give yourself a shout out again, real quick here, and then you can just hang up on me, and I'll say bye right now. Okay, so uh, plugs, go to my website. My website is my hub for all of my TV appearances, for all my shows, for my podcast, Ask a Spaceman, for space radio, for all the cool science and art projects I do. Go to pmsutter.com, P-M-S-U-T-T-E-R.com. You can find me on social media, on Twitch, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. I'm at Paul Matt Sutter on all those platforms. Space Radio, Ask a Spaceman, YouTube, I'll, I'll just, just, I don't know. I'm out there. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, bye.